Good morning. Welcome to Ask the Admin by Ag Bailey. Today we've got a couple of questions about some sales processes, and then we'll open the floor for any other questions that you may have today for us. So we're going to jump right into some questions today. Um, these are kind of based around sales processes and how to handle uh, different types of things in the system regarding sales type of issues. Um, so the first question we've got is how to manage dead opportunity. So um, basically what we're looking at here is we've got an opportunity that then works and then it goes cold for one reason or another and, and stops from it. And you can either lose it or it goes on hold or whatever. So there's multiple ways to handle this. Um, you can update the statuses for the stages of your opportunity object in the system. Uh, to have anything that you want in here, you could put a status that basically says uh, cold or dead or something like that uh, and throw them in there if you'd like. Um, and you can have that show as a closed status if you'd like to keep it off of your open list. Um, general process though would be that you it would probably get marked as closed lost. Um, and then maybe you may have some sort of status indicator on the account itself. Uh, that either is an active checkbox or a status or something like that uh, that you can mark and mark your account basically as inactive or maybe as cold or something like that. Uh, and then those can pull into a list view or a report uh, where you can see all of those accounts that have gone inactive on you. Uh, that have maybe lost opportunity or things that way. All of those options give you some great reporting capabilities to have your sales team follow up with those. Another thing you can do is whenever something gets marked as inactive or closed loss, you could set up a process builder or workflow rules to build some automation in uh, creating follow-up tasks for uh, two, three, six months down the road, whatever you'd like. And you can set them up on time triggers so that those tasks don't even get created uh, for a couple of months. And then they get created and assigned to the account owner and then they can call and follow up with that, that lead or that account and, and see where they're at there. So different ideas on managing dead opportunities. Another question we had is how to use Salesforce or sales process, how to mark a demo set and demo help. And track the number of contacts before how to enclose them. So there's a few items in this one that come into play here. So um, the answer the easiest one first. And that is how to track the number of contacts before a close. So basically you want to track how many times you touch with this client. Uh, it could be via email, it could be a call, anything like that. So basically we're looking at activities here. Um, <coughs> there's the log a call button which will create an activity. Whenever a call is made, make sure your sales team is logging those notes into the system. Uh, also email, you can send email straight from Salesforce. You, there's multiple ways to have email come into Salesforce. So uh, you can set up a Salesforce for Outlook if you're using Outlook. There's some really cool options this is up there where your email can be pushed over to Salesforce. There's also some automated functions around uh, my email to Salesforce that can be turned on. And I can show you that here real quick. If we go up to your name and my settings, under email, there's a my email to Salesforce option here. And this will give you this email address here, the great big long email address. And then you can set up a rule on your side uh, or contact even uh, with that email address. And then in your email client, as you're sending emails out and replying to people, you can just BCC this email address and your emails will be pushed into Salesforce. They'll automatically attach to the contact based on the email address. Or you can have them go into what's called the My Unresolved item. And what that is, is just a list where we've got it hold until you go assign them to a record. 
because I will push your emails over and have them show up there in Salesforce. So I can give you a quick demo of kind of what that looks like. So I'm just going to take this email. I'm going to copy this email. I just my clipboard and save it. And then in my email client, I'm going to go create a new message. And I'm just going to send it straight to that email. And we'll send that right over. Now from my home screen, I have a link here that says unresolved item. And so when I go here, as soon as that email gets into my system, as long as it doesn't find an existing contact with the email address that it came from, it should show up in this list. I'm going to bounce back that I'm not authorized. Let me check my settings again. Remember my name, my settings, email, my email is Salesforce. We're going to make sure, oh, my address is wrong here. So this wants to know what email addresses are allowed to send into the system. You've got to make sure your email address is correct there. Otherwise, it does bounce out. You can save email attachments this way as well if you'd like. Um, you can leave that off. Save your storage space if you have a lot of email going in. That could be helpful. So then the email is now in my Salesforce system under unresolved items. And you'll see on the side here I've got options. I can connect it to a contact or a lead directly, and I can use my lookup to find my contact. And then I've also got options here where as soon as I pick my contact, it wants to know, you know, what about my account to automatically link it to. I could select another record and I can assign this to anything in the system I want to at this point. So I come down here and I say I want it to go to an opportunity, and I'm going to look up my opportunity to assign it there and save it. So now when I go back to my opportunity, and I come down here to my activity history, you'll see there's that email as part of my activity. So now I can count those up, um, or I can build a field into my opportunity record the number of activities that are coming in and just shows me that on my opportunity. It's the number of activities there. Um, there's multiple ways to do that. Probably the easiest one is using a tool called the Declarative Lookup Rollup tool. Uh, you can do a Google search to find that. Uh, it's a little app that you install and it'll let you do rollup uh, on any lookup field in the system. So generally rollups are only done with master detail records. But this declarative lookup tool lets you do rollups off of any lookup field there is. Another part of this question they're asking about is how to mark uh, demo sets and track demos. And so that would just be a field that you would build into your Salesforce system on the opportunity. Um, you could just have a date field there. You'll see this is an example of an opportunity to set up with a specific sales process. 
And we've got things in here like these connect stages, where every time you connect with the client, uh, you mark in the date that you connect and put in some notes about the connection. You can do the same thing for demos. If you're marking demos, then you can just have a field that is your demo date, um, maybe a drop down list of what you're demoing or an open text field to type in notes about the demo itself. You could also build it into your stages um, and have a stage called demo. And then you can use the validation rule to require your opportunity to go through the demo if you need to. Lots of options there. Um, we probably want to talk a little more in specific about that particular question. Uh, this is one of the great powers of Salesforce is these types of questions. There's multiple ways to handle these scenarios, and a lot of it is really going to come down to your business process and just building the right fields to match your business process to control what you like. Another question we've had come in recently is uh, best practice for handling leads that aren't dead but can't act until a future date. So basically something's going on hold uh, by the client for a specific time frame. So there's a couple of ways to do that. If you're just talking about a lead, um, you can have a lead status of on hold. You can have a lead status of client hold or something like that. Uh, and then just build yourself a task to follow up with them at a certain time frame, whether that's your own time frame or a time frame the client gives you. Um, you can have the system with workflow world and process builder. You can auto-create those tasks whenever those statuses are selected as well. Another option might be that if the client is just waiting for uh, their fiscal year to roll over, then you can simply ask them, when would be a good time for us to reach back out to you? have a date field that says um, client hold date, and as soon as you mark that field, just have a, a workflow update the status to on hold for you uh, and create a task. And then your sales team can follow up when they're ready to do that. You can do this on leads, on opportunities uh, alike, either way in the system, but that would be a really great way to handle those scenarios. That way you're not actually closing things out, you're just kind of moving them to the side and with reminders to tell you when to pick back up on it. Well, those are kind of some questions that we've had coming in about sales processes. Um, for the most part, a lot of sales processes really come down to customizing Salesforce to meet your sales process and what you want. There are sales methodologies that you can study and look at there. Uh, we do have one ourselves that we call sales stream. I wasn't able to get our product manager over that to be with us today, um, but it is something that we will have training available on very soon. Uh, you can watch our training site for that information and we will have that up here uh, as soon as we get that available. As well as you can see, we have a number of other courses that we're building. Uh, we've got automation trainings, object management training, security training, analytics for reporting, uh, information. So we've got some, and we'll have new courses that are going to be coming into this list very soon as well. So this is a great thing that you can watch. Um, the address simply is technologyconsulting2.ibailey.com slash Salesforce training courses. And I'll paste this into the uh, comments of our session today, so you can grab that. So sales processes, um, like I was saying, they kind of vary. There's a lot you can do with them, uh, but you really need to figure out what is your sales process and how you want to handle it, and then we can work through that uh, with your system. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Uh, if you've got any questions for me, please, you can either raise your hand and I can open up your mic, or you can just type your question into the uh, GoToMeeting window there. 
Um, I'm just to open it up and see what kind of questions you guys have. We can talk about sales or we can talk about anything else with your sales or system that you need help with. You've got my attention for the next 40 minutes. Um, what can we do to help you out today? And it looks like we've got one, I've got a question coming in here about how to quickly clean out accounts. So that could be a good question. If you're just looking for uh, cleaning up your data, because maybe you've got a bunch of duplicate data or something like that in there, um, the best way to do that is really to look at some data deduping tools uh, that are out there. Um, there's some really good ones available on the App Exchange that you can take a look at. Demand Tools is one of the best and most robust uh, data cleansing and deduping tools that there is. It's a very popular one. Popular one. It is a little expensive, but it is a very great tool for helping to clean up your data. Um, if you're thinking about maybe old accounts that haven't done business with you for a long time and you want to just kind of clear that out of your database, uh, you could do that as well. Keep in mind you cannot delete a record if it has any type of uh, child or child relationship to it until you get rid of those uh, child objects, child records as well. Uh, so what you would want to do is basically do some data exports and archive all of your data and then you can start deleting data out of your system if you need to do that. But definitely back up and archive that data first before you start removing anything out of your system. Great question, thank you. Um, again, I'm here to answer your questions. Any questions you have, don't be afraid to speak up and ask. I'm happy to open up the mic or like I mentioned, you can go through the chat window or through the questions pane and ask questions. All right, uh, at this point, it looks like we don't have any more questions coming in. Thank you very much for joining us today. This has been recorded, and we'll put the recording up on uh, our YouTube channel um, sometime within the next week. I look forward to seeing everybody again on a future Ask the Admin session. Again, remember, we are here to answer your questions. Any questions that you may have that you need help with, uh, we're happy to answer those and talk through those. We can do a little bit of configuration on screen if we need to. Um, and we can kind of help you go through some of these scenarios with you. Uh, and again, also remember, we do have these training courses available now. We're happy to uh, work with you and talk with you about your training needs uh, and help empower you to be able to do more with your Salesforce system and make it better for your company. Thank you for joining us today. Everybody have a wonderful weekend and we look forward to seeing you again at the next Ask Me Admin session in two weeks.